Hey everyone, welcome to the Fin Factor. I'm Paul, and Aaron has died of the coronavirus. Uh, we are here. Too in, soon. Well, I'm here. <laughs> Too soon. <laughs> in in studio here tonight. Uh, it's episode number eighty-two. Aaron, do you, who do we have for number eighty-two? Uh, we got one guy. Yeah, Nikolai Goldobin. Goldobin. If you say it like Dan Rizinowski, you got to get the y on that last part there. The Goldobin. Whatever. He was uh, he was one of my favorite players. Actually, yeah, briefly, I, I briefly. thought he had some. Uh, I mean, some upside there. So favorite, maybe not the right word. Yeah, I made it by the way. Something uh, we thought would. It's a miracle. I, hey, well, that's number two. Yeah. By the way. Okay. Fully produced. Well, I meant that the coronavirus thing that you're back. Oh, you're good. Right. I thought you died. Yeah, I'm not that old. Rock and roll. Okay. So <laughs> anyway, uh, we are in studio again. Aaron's got the laptop out. Take your comments <sighs> and your questions. I can't imagine what we're going to be talking about tonight, though. Um. I guess the Chicago game. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Okay, we can start with that. I guess I don't know. <laughs> yeah, um, crazy big news about the, not just the NHL, I mean the, the NBA, NHL, AHL, MLS, and it's going on and on. All Baseball's about. I haven't. I don't think, as far as I know, yeah. today baseball hasn't announced it, but they're going to. Yeah. They're in spring training right now, right, but right. Um, most likely they're going to start their season in probably June or July. Just push it back yeah. and shorten it up. Which will be great because baseball's way too long. So <laughs> it'll be a good season to watch. All right, that sounds good. Yeah. So there's just a bunch of uh, all leagues that are kind of closing up shop, and um, it's you know it's, it's it's crazy, man. It's just crazy times right it, now. It's nuts. Um, I, I don't even know where to begin. Really, the, there's a huge outbreak worldwide. Yeah. It's It's considered a what was the word? Epidemic. Or... Epidemic. Um, for those of you who have ever played Pandemic. Pandemic. Right. Yes. The, there you go. the game Pandemic. No, they call it epidemic, but the game pandemic yeah. exactly shows this scenario <laughs> right. and how fast it can spread and how quickly everyone goes, oh no. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, it, it's sad and and I think the tip of the iceberg for um, or the straw that broke the camel's back, I guess, for the NHL okay. is the NBA. Yeah. The NBA canceled their season the day before, and that's because not one but two players on the same team had tested positive. Yeah. And did you see what the second guy did? No. Before he was before he was tested positive, like he was joking about it, and he like grabbed everyone's microphones, all the like as a joke, like just kind of rubbed his hands all over oh, it. Oh no! And then like he he apologized for it later, and he was just like, "Oh man, I feel so bad." Yeah, like, he's such a jerk for taking it lightly for oh, one, my gosh. and then possibly infecting everyone. Yeah, yeah a yeah. lot of people. Wow. So. um Anyway, th they play for the Utah Jazz. They played <sighs> three, or they had played in three NHL arenas. Yeah. Uh, same locker rooms. Right. And that's the problem is, especially in hockey, like, if you ever seen hockey when the flu hits, it hits the locker room bad. Like, there's multiple guys on the same team because they're sweating like crazy. They're just, they're, their gear, you know, right, from yeah. hockey, your gear's that's disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> so, and it gets washed together. Like, it's just, um, yeah, you know, it's just crazy. Yeah. So, so anyway, the NHL, I think, did right by doing this. It sucks, but it's not like they're the only league that suspends it and they're overreacting. Right. It's Everyone's going to be doing this. Yeah. And right now, we're starting to see schools closing down. Yeah. Uh, has your kids Valley, school? Cr Valley Christian, I heard, was, was one of the ones. Valorant's like, down. Yeah, there's yeah, a whole bunch yesterday. of them that are just, just down and out. Uh, my kid's school is actually not, but I'm thinking about just yanking them anyway. I think soon. I think yeah. right now, it's like high schools and colleges, practically all of them are shut down. Um, or at least for a while, mm. suspended, I guess, in a way. Um, and then elementary schools, I think, are next. Probably, I would think, this week. I think they're going to be talking about it over the weekend, considering how bad everything kind of escalated in the yeah. last couple of days. Um, so it's really weird. I went to Costco today, and it was a nightmare. I went at lunchtime thinking, oh, I went yeah. in for an eye exam, right? Yeah. I Thankfully, I didn't have to buy anything else. It wasn't like going into shop. Sure. I go in there, the parking lot was packed. I was yeah. like, what is going on? <laughs> I walk in and there's just people everywhere. The, the Costco by us, this, yeah. the new one, yeah, yeah. Um, usually doesn't have that many people in it. That's why I like going there. It's easy to get in and out in the parking lot and everything. And it was like, it was, there's people everywhere. The lines, yeah. I've never seen the lines that long. Even on a weekend, I've never seen them that it's, bad. It's funny you mentioned Costco because I, I did go, I went a couple of times over the weekend. Yeah. It was just We forgot a couple of different things. Oh, did you load and, up on toilet paper well, like everyone else? <laughs> one time we went there, all the toilet paper, all the sanitary wipes, mm -hmm. um, those are all gone. Like just, just gone. Uh, along with all the orange juice. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I think oranges. The, the the instant noodles. <laughs> yeah, all the instant noodles. Yeah. Are gone. 
I'm like, that whole, the whole okay. back rack, when you get to where the water and yeah. everything is, gone. Go just uh, yes, cleaned up. All the water, they had a ton yeah. of water that was gone. Paper towels, water, toilet yeah. paper, sanitary wipes, everything. I, w I went back the next day and they had it all restocked and it was like limit two. And I needed, we were down to like six rolls anyway. So like, right. I ended up getting the two of them just because we needed them anyway. But like, people are stocking up because they're panicked, I guess, about having to poop in themselves or something. <laughs> I don't know. They're afraid of getting they're locked in their house I, for that long I and they can't get out? I think that's what it is. I think it's a little crazy yeah just a bit i don't know i i was mad or my wife was really mad because she went uh over a week ago maybe two weeks ago and we legit needed paper towels and, and she walks she walked in the back road she goes where is everything and they're like oh you got to be here at 8 30 lined up yeah. and there's a huge line of people and she was there at 9 30 yeah. like it wasn't like she was there late she just yeah. didn't know yeah. and that whole back thing was bonkers. already cleaned out Nuts. Just bonkers. Crazy times right now, people. Yep. Crazy times. So uh, let's go ahead and hit up some of the uh, the questions. I'm sure they're sure. kind of related. Uh, some of these. So sticking with the COVID. Yeah. Uh, hey, guys. San Jose Sharks organized, uh, sent out an email that yeah. an employee has COVID-19. Right. We did see that. Um, he. So you want to talk about it a little bit? So, yeah. The, they... the last game that that uh, part-time employee uh, had worked it was the March third game. I talked about there in a little bit beforehand. Mm -hmm. um, the who who is it that makes the announcement or the recommendation? Uh, the county, Santa, Santa, Clara, Santa County. Clara County. It wasn't like CDC. Okay. No. Santa Clara County made the recommendation on March fifth to suspend all games for less than crowds of less than a thousand. Yes, yes. Keep crowds less than a thousand. Exactly. People. So essentially, just to not allow those those games, or, or I guess should say to not allow the crowd to assemble. Right. Still play the game if you want, but whatever. Um, they did play one game, but the last game that that person had uh, worked at was before that announcement. So uh, take that however you will. But if you were at that March third game, um, there is a possibility that you know you, you may have come into contact because again, this is something that apparently it, it can lives for like nine days and it's attracted to like you know like metal and whatnot, door handles and whatnot, that kind of thing. So um, it, it'll stick and live for about nine days, is what I've mm -hmm. heard. Uh, on like a, on a door handle. So uh, if some if he touched the bathroom door and then somebody else touched that same door and then all of a sudden it spreads throughout the entire arena. So if you were there during that game, uh, you know, be careful with uh, I don't know how exactly. I mean, just wash, wash repeatedly. It's too late um, now. Swimming it's chlorine. Been ten days. Yeah, that's that's probably true. Yeah, it's probably too late for you. So uh, more moving forward, any right. place that you go, you should be using wipes. Right. Sanitary. Uh, um, hand sanitizer yeah absolutely uh, wash your hands repeatedly and all that so um but that's that's the the whole story not the whole story but that's the main story behind that one right but and stop touching your face which i constantly do yeah there was somebody i forget who it was she was on the news yeah telling you not to do it and she licks her finger to yeah, turn the page make sure like, you don't touch your face and then she goes licks her finger touches and then the, in the background there was somebody, somebody else <laughs> uh was i don't know doing something with her nose or something yeah. it's like I mean, I'm going to do it, too. Like, I do oh, this. All the what, time. It, it I always do this. Is. I'm yeah, always, yeah. like, ugh. But, whatever. you know, I, I just got done just before the show started. I uh, went in there, washed my hands. Which, by the way, use soap, yes, but also use uh, as, as hot of water as you can uh, tolerate. Mm -hmm. um, so I did that. I'm here. I'm touching my face. So um, hopefully we don't go home and die. Okay? All right. Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> so, so what else is the, 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 uh, they say well, about that? Well, related is how long do you think the NHL will suspend games for? Do you think they're going to finish the regular season or are they just going to go straight into playoffs? Yeah, I have a hard time with them going straight into playoffs only because, I mean, imagine basically they, the whole team just takes three weeks off, whatever it is, right? Then you're just expected to jump into, like, high-level combat. Are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. Like, I just don't know if that's going to that's gonna work out. So I wouldn't be surprised to see no Stanley Cup playoff whatsoever. Uh, just, you know, a season that's essentially thrown away. They played regular season. Everybody had a good time. Great. You really think that would next. happen? I honestly think that that might be something that they do. However, I could see <laughs> getting back into regular season action. If they're going to do that, get back into regular season action – Maybe the playoffs get pushed a little bit farther out. Maybe they do a, a weird different format for playoffs or something to that effect. Um, I will say, though, that if they do cut the season short and some teams have played a different amount of games, mm -hmm. they do this in the AHL, right? So not all teams get to play the exact same number of games. And the way they do it is by points percentage. So uh, maybe you've got more wins than another team, but they've played more games. They've got more uh, you know, overtime losses Point or whatever. Yeah, exactly. So it would be they may have more points. But you've got more wins, and the point percentages works out that even though they have more points, you still make the playoffs. So uh, it, it could be something like that. Uh, who there knows? was a uh, phone call with 
the league to all of the GMs, basically, I yeah. think, right? Or the organizations yesterday to talk about first suspending the league. Yeah. But I bet they had... Can, there's probably multiple contingency plans in place. They don't. They don't. They're not winging it. Basically, right, right. like basically, if we have to stay close for 30 days, here are the options. We could finish the games out, yeah. which most teams are at 74, 75 games. So they got six, seven games left. No, it's more than that. Pretty sure it's more than that. I think it was like uh, mid high 60s. Correct me if I'm wrong. You will correct me if I'm wrong. Let me take a look at the standings real quick. Sorry, I should have had this up. It's not a problem. Um, <laughs> no, if there's only a handful of games left, I mean. 70. 70, okay, so... 70-ish. Yeah. 68 to 70. Exactly, there you go. All right, so they got about a dozen games left. Right. That's, That's enough for three weeks worth of... Three, four weeks worth of games. But they're suspended for three weeks, Exactly. So, so it's tough to say... Either you jump straight into playoffs based on points percentage or... See, I think... to squeeze all these games. That, I think they're going to do that. I think they're just going to go straight into playoffs because the timeline sticks to what the normal timeline would have been very close to it, at right. least. So they're not going to be pushing Stanley Cup finals into July, mm-hmm. um, which you know messes up the draft, messes up. But they would push free the draft. agency. They would push the draft. But they now, would push free agency. now you have a shorter summer break. How long is players. how long is the the window between July and when they actually start doing preseason? Though? I'm just saying, like there's a I, whole lot of time. But that's an NHLPA decision. Sure. Like it's, it it yep. takes a lot involved. It's not just the league saying this is what's yep. going to happen. Yep. So um, I think in these times, though, I think that they would have some cooperation based on these um, kind of exceptional circumstances. Right, and I think, I think on that phone call, because right now Zach just said it would not be fair to the teams that are in the mix, basically trying fighting for a playoff spot. Yeah, I agree, but you have to outweigh the good and the bad. You know, like I don't really. I mean, I'll tell you why. Once they play eighty-two, there's still teams that were in the mix. If I they mean, had one more game, right? The other I mean, thing, just, right? The other thing is you have to take into account. Um, Logistics of getting teams rescheduling basically those games the end of the, if they're going to play the regular season, you know later. Yeah, they have to reschedule all of that. Yeah, and that's not going to be easy to do. Not that it's impossible, but you it's definitely think, not easy. You got to think about getting people back in those seats, and they, they were expecting that they're going to be there on certain dates, and now these dates don't work for them anymore. They were traveling. What I mean, Zach knows all about travel, right? So I mean, I, there, there's a whole lot, and it's not just let's just reschedule the game. Now they may play those in front of empty arenas or lesser crowds or whatever the case may be just to try to crank those games out and you know forget about concessions forget about the the fans having to show up or whatever think, else. I think that's what they were planning on doing and yeah. now they're not. Well no now I'm saying yeah. that when they reconvene maybe it'd be right. easier for them to squeeze more games in if they didn't have like a full venue that they had to deal with it was just like hey guys show up play the game leave right. Anthony has a great uh, suggestion. Cancel the remainder of the NHL season and allow the Sharks to keep their original first pick. <laughs> yeah, I like that. That's that's great. No, uh, that, that's not going to happen. But it uh, does uh, bring up where does that, that pick land because uh, if they were to end the regular season. Well, they're doing the lottery. Right. They're supposed to be doing the lottery, what, the second week of April? See, and again, I, I wonder it, how much of that get. That's when they're scheduled, but they didn't realize that the season was going to be changing right. like this. It could so, get changed. Yeah, I'm sure they'll, they'd end up pushing that um, as well. So, I mean, this, again, it's unprecedented times. We're going to have to see what, what kind of shakes out here. I think the league's just kind of in a holding pattern right now mm-hmm. to see how the rest of the world shakes out for the next couple of weeks. Um, hopefully the, the epidemic kind of dies down. I mean, did you see any of those charts that people were putting up on Twitter about... Um, basically what the world is doing kind of shutting down a little bit how it curtails the yeah. the spread yeah so by one day it saves like thousands of people from getting infected mm-hmm. and so like the sooner you do it the better yeah so it, it's kind of good that they're finally doing stuff and right. reacting to it um, but yeah it does kind of feel like the end of the world like I know the Walking Dead fans out there I was gonna say like, <laughs> man zombie apocalypse is it crazy, actually coming man. Man, crazy yeah um, who knew Anyway, uh, Hernandez and Hernandez. How about the NHL players play as themselves in NHL 20 and continue the season on Twitch? I like that. That wouldn't be bad. That's dope. <laughs> You'd find out who. I don't think Joe Thornton would be yeah. very good. <laughs> Probably hasn't played a video game in his life. Nice. Um, let's talk about. This is from Jorgen Bedstead. Let's talk about how we finished dead last in the conference. Dead last for now, but mm-hmm. there was a dozen games left. No, we're not dead last. Actually, we were ahead of we're ahead of Anaheim. The, yeah, Anaheim. Well, the Kings had just jumped over us. Yeah, because they just the Kings were on a tear. By the way, 
eight one and one really in their last ten. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So they got it out of the basement uh, by one point ahead of the Sharks. So in the league right now, Detroit has thirty nine points. <laughs> I can't believe how little amount of points they have. That is, yeah. it's just unreal yeah. in in this era. <laughs> Minus one twenty two goal differential. That is brutal. Uh, the next place team is Ottawa with sixty two points. Yeah. That that's uh, that's such a big gap. Then the Sharks at sixty three. Then LA was 64, Anaheim has 67, so we are dead last in the conference. I was thinking Anaheim was below us. They're actually above us. So yeah, wow, we are dead last in the conference. Well, <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Ouch. I don't know. Yeah, I, you know, honestly, okay. Let's let's also not forget. We probably wouldn't be dead last in the conference if we weren't playing like half of an AHL team because yeah. of injuries, not just right. to NHL players, to our top players. Mm -hmm. There's a whole lot going on there. I'm not making excuses for the season, but realistically, this should have ended a little bit better than where they were now. So when we say, yeah, they're, they're at the bottom of the, the standings or bottom of the conference, yeah, they are. There's definitely reasons for that. Um, if everyone was back healthy, I, I mean, I'm pretty confident we'd be a little bit higher up, but... Zach makes a good point. If the Sharks, or a question, if the Sharks did not have injuries, would they have a legit shot at the playoffs? No. I think they would have. If Couture and Hurdle were both still playing, I think they would be much closer in the mix. Maybe not quite a shot at the playoffs, but they would have been, I, I think it would have been close down to the last week. The reason I say no like immediately is because we had both of them through uh, the horrible October and the horrible December. The November brought my hopes back up. But the coaching change, I think, and the strategy change, they started to click around January, sure. February, early sure. February, and then he got hurt. I, I still... That's why I think they were turning a corner and they were playing better as a team, as a whole. Yeah. Better, way better team defense. The goaltending, yeah. you saw Jones's numbers in February yeah. were, were, just, were just awesome. So I think, um, I think they would have been much closer. I mean, they probably would have... They're at 63 points, maybe another dozen points on top of that. So they, then we're talking 75, 76 points, and now they're close to the middle. If they got closer to 80, you know, they'd be close. I think they would be close. That's my point. I think they would have been a dozen points. It's six wins. Yeah. I think they would have gotten six wins with a healthy team. See, and that's the thing we've been saying pretty much the whole season is you know they're right there they're only a few points away they're like four or five wins away carlson coacher and hurdle yeah Man, i know that's just... i know it's huge it's huge yeah not i can't think of any teams that would recover from losing their top two centers and their 11 and a half million dollar you know offensive defenseman i i don't i don't know of many teams that would recover from that yeah um but i don't know again like it just we kept thinking, you know, they're gonna they're gonna turn the page. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. There's too much talent on this team, and it just just never seemed to come to fruition. Now, yes, they did play better when Boudner took the reins. Absolutely, they did. It took them after a, a while. Took them a couple weeks, yeah, right? Exactly. Defense started tightening up. Goaltending started looking a little bit better. But even when that was happening, I don't think we had a whole lot of offensive outbursts either. Right. Right. Um, so I think that's while it's great to limit the other team scoring. And that's for me what's what's going to ultimately help you win the game is by limiting the other team. Um, I, I just don't. I think the well had dried up offensively. Um, I just don't think there's enough firepower, which is crazy because, I mean, the names that were there, you know, you right. would think that we wouldn't have a problem with that, but. Then it's um, Anthony Sanchez said the Sharks never had a top two right wing. Yeah, because LeBanc kept getting pushed to the third and fourth yeah. line. Yeah. Uh, just real quick, can you guys hear us okay? I just want to make sure the sound levels are all right. Otherwise, I can boost them up a little bit. Um, now you right. <laughs> yeah, I just thought about it. Nobody said anything, so. Yeah, okay. Just making sure. Um, da -da 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 -da. Having trouble con or, uh, trouble controlling. The volume of my voice. <laughs> um, if there's a cup final, whoever wins will definitely have an asterisk yeah. next to their name, just like Chicago did in 2014. Maybe. If they didn't finish the regular season, I could see that. You know, it's not their fault, though. Right. It's not their fault. It's not like they, like, took the easy path. It's not like they were uh, banging on a trash can to get calls, you know, from, from the dugout, right? I mean, it, it, there's 
this is the card that every single team in the league was dealt, right? Um, I, I, I can't, you can't blame them, you know, if they go out and they win it. I mean, they're, they're doing the exact same thing that everyone else is doing. Yeah. Whether it's 82 games or it's 70 games instead, everybody played the same amount. They all had the same, you know, 12 games off of, or, you know, break from what they should have played, right? They're all got, get the same three weeks or whatever it is that they're going to be shut down. So there's, it's all, it, it's different from the other wins, the other Stanley Cup wins, but in that year, it's not like anybody had like an advantage necessarily. Everybody's doing the exact same amount of games. So I, I don't know. There, there is an asterisk that it's different from the other years, but I, I think it's just as well deserved. Um, if the league pushes the schedule back, it will be interesting, interesting to see how well injured players get back into the game. That's from Nicholas Egan. I agree. Uh, looking at my fantasy team, Steven Stamkos had surgery, and he was going to be out for six weeks or so. Now he's only out for two, three. He missed, I think he's missed two. So that would be it yeah. in terms of games played if they were to play the, le- the yeah. rest of the regular season. Now, what makes me think that they might play the regular season games is it would be like a mini preseason to get ready for playoffs. It's pre-playoff. Helps yeah. the teams that are fighting for a spot to get a chance to get some more points and make the playoffs, but then it gets the players back into shape and right. playing again. Right. Um, because it, it's one thing when you have a one-week break versus a three-week break as a player. Um, at least at the break, you're usually practicing as a team, and right now they're not doing that at all. So they're essentially just, I mean, nobody's not doing anything. They're going to be training at home, yeah. but they're not going to be playing together or practicing together um, just to, to be safe. So it, it'll help players. It, it'll be, like, it's a double-edged sword in a way. Because players, all the banged up players, they're not injured, but they're just kind of bruised and banged up. They're going to be healthy, and they're going to come back strong. Right. Whereas the health, the injured players are going to recover a little bit better and quicker. Um, I mean, you can imagine Couture getting a little rest his head a little yeah. bit more yeah. if they're in the playoffs and they get to come back, you know. So it's good. It's kind of a good thing. Um, it's almost like, man, maybe the NHL should have a one-week break between the end of the regular season and the start of playoffs. <laughs> Just so that everyone gets that little bit of recovery time. Yeah. Um, and you'll get a better product overall, I think. I don't know. I mean, think about it last year. The Sharks won two seven-game series. Yeah. They started the next series two days after they had just won one. Mm-hmm. So they just kept playing so many games in a row. And they were hurt. They kept getting hurt as right. they were going along. I bet that had a part to play. Just the amount of games that they no, had. of course. Of course. They didn't have the rest. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Whereas Columbus was fresh. <laughs> After they swept Tampa. Oh, was, yeah. Right. Come on. And then they Jeez, got swept. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Just that's because they have yeah. Bobrovsky. But see, that's the thing. It's like you can't really... Some teams will react to, you know, big breaks uh, in the way you think that they will. But which, if both teams had, bo- had a yeah, break. sure, sure. Because when one team continually plays, they kind of have momentum going. Yeah. Whereas if they both have the break, then they both yeah. come out strong. Well, maybe, maybe the for one team the break kind of makes them kind of lull a little bit. For another team, maybe it gives sure. them the, the I'd take the break anytime. Yeah, I think most teams would <laughs> for sure. I don't mean like a long one. Yeah, maybe even just five days, four or five days, mm-hmm. not one day off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> caretaker wanted if Gary Bettman is on the ice and no one is there, are there booze? There's always booze. Have you heard that? Yeah, yeah. Someone uh, asked that one. They uh, someone else on Twitter asked. Um, it, this is when they thought that they were still playing, but in front of no fans. Yeah. I said, well, wait, how are the players going to know when to shoot? <laughs> yeah, I saw that. The fans are shoot. Oh, that's good. <laughs> um, uh, Nicholas Egan, props to the Mercury News and The Athletic for making their coronavirus coverage free to the public. Yes, um, I'm also going to say The Athletic subscription is worth it. Yeah. We are not endorsed it, by The Athletic. At all. I'll say that first, but... Uh, we are a, we are subscribers and we read a lot of it and there's some really good coverage. Really, I mean, they post yeah. all the best sports writers they around really the country yeah. for every sport. Um, and we know, like a lot of you guys don't like Kurz, but the, the the fact of the matter is, I mean, he's he's in that locker room. He's asking, uh, you know, sometimes the questions you guys think are goofy. And I even when he came on the show, I kind of he ribbed him, him a little. I poked and prodded him yeah. a little bit on the question, you know, about the whole Drake concert thing. But, I mean, on the whole, he's got a lot of really good inside information. 
Um, there's also, I think, uh, Corey Pronman, I think was the guy's name. And he had an article that was talking about the, uh, well, he's always talking about um, prospects and whatnot. So if you're big on uh, knowing more about the prospects for each team, um, he's a really good read as well. He has the write-ups on like all the teams and all their prospects and the, the, the draft prospects um, who the certain teams are probably going to be picking, all that stuff. He's, he's way deep into that. Um, he also had an article recently about how the uh, coronavirus will be affecting drafting for this coming season because since everything is shut down, you can't really go, and all the scouts got called back too. Yep. You can't really go and watch these guys play anymore, so they're really relying more heavily now on video, past video um, of these players that they want to scout. Which is great that you know in this day and age you're able to do that and you're able to have uh, you know conference calls that are you know remote. Maybe and the Sharks else. get some steals in because there's yeah. players that got missed. Could be. Uh, they, they were saying, however, because the Sharks generally like to do this, they like to go to the European market. Mm -hmm. I guess there's um, the international tournaments. Probably like world, world Juniors, for instance. Not World Juniors, but the World Championships. That's that's the one. That's the World Championships. So, so the, Anthony said, "Will the World Championship get canceled?" Probably. I think it will. I can't imagine that it doesn't because you think, have people from all countries coming into one spot. I that, also think there's some players that will probably back out if they don't cancel absolutely. it. They're just not going to play in it to yeah. risk it. Yeah. Um, that might even be coming from their team saying, don't do it. Yeah. It's an insurance risk kind right. of thing. Yeah. Um, so, I, I, but a lot of European players get scouted at those tournaments. So, uh, and not just you know, if they're a good player, but how they play against the other country's top players. So it, it's a really good showcase for them in terms of you know their draft ranking and, and whatever else. So um, he had a, a nice article today about that. And um, again, not, not at all endorsed by yeah. um, The Athletic, but we, we've just enjoyed them and they're, but they're not But we could be, we're open to <laughs> sponsorship. Uh, <laughs> That's, uh, Nicholas Egan, how should I spend my time now that there's no sports? Esports. Yeah. Esports. Do we have good. any openings in the league? I don't know. I can go through and start kicking some folks that haven't been playing in a while. Although, those folks might start becoming active now because yeah. there's <laughs> not much else to do. But um, we almost. It's almost like we could have a second team. Somebody run a second team. We probably could. I'm not leaving. I don't want to leave. Yeah. I'm just saying. You kidding me? If there's enough, we get enough interest. The arena can... I have now. This is the whole. <laughs> you point. You don't want to start over. This was the whole point to it's have the, the grind. The, the grind to no, get there. No, it was the Barbie Funhouse Arena, and I've got all my accessories. I got everything I wanted. You're not taking that away from me. I still think you need the rooster on the. the jersey. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Change it back. Yeah. <laughs> um. Da, 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 da. Where are we? <laughs> Oh, Anthony Sanchez told Nicholas, you can go rewatch Game 7 against Vegas over yeah, and over. there you go. That's always fun. Because you're always yeah. like, oh, I don't know how this is going to end. And then kind of... On the edge of your seat. <laughs> <laughs> kind of shed a single tear for all the names that are no longer on the team. <laughs> uh, Raymond White, will the drafting be like when Crosby was drafted where they throw threw all the picks into a hat? Kind of... That kind of deal if the season doesn't finish. Sorry, I'm trying to understand what you're trying no, to say. No, I feel like they would just take your current standing. And, yeah, because and, and the year that. he was drafted, there was no season. Yeah. Nobody played. So that made sense. I mean, it's it's funny to go back and look at that because, uh, I don't know, I've talked about this before, but Pittsburgh was about to sell and move yeah. out of Pittsburgh. There was not going to be a Pittsburgh Penguin team anymore. They were going to, I don't know, I don't remember where they were going to go. Maybe, yeah. maybe to Canada? <laughs> no, I think it might have been a... It might even, I don't know, Winnipeg was probably trying to get sure. him. Somebody yeah. was trying to get him. Um, but at the last minute, I think Mario Lemieux came in, but then they got the number one pick, which was obviously Crosby. Crosby literally saved the Pittsburgh yeah. Penguins. They were going to be gone. They were good as gone. Um, I think Lemieux as the uh, owner player helped yes, out too. really weird. Yeah. Huh? Kind of cool too. Like yeah, you really just cool. probably won't see that ever again. No. I mean, that would be like Doug Wilson drafting somebody and be like, you know what? I'm going to come out of retirement. I'm also going to be his landlord. <laughs> so he's going to be my employee. My yeah. Well, he's the GM. He's the owner. That'd be like Hustle Platner. Yeah, <laughs> true. Yeah. Even if Hustle Platner played in the NHL and wasn't wow. amazing. But um, what will the Sharks do for fans that had tickets to future games? Or is that a question for a later date? 
I don't know what they did. I don't know if they've gave out refunds or not. I so, thought I saw on Twitter somebody said they got a refund. No, be, because the, the for season ticket holders, what my understanding was that, the, and I'm not a full season ticket holder or anything, so, but this is just what I, I thought I had read, was that they were saying, okay, hold on to your tickets, hold off on all the other actions or in terms of trying to get refunds through us and whatever, because if the season starts back up, then it would just be kind of reassigning those dates to different dates, and then you'll have the tickets for those games. So I think that's what they were, were saying. We don't um, want to give you back your money. We're going to hold on to it. Essentially, but, you know, hey, it is what it is. I'm sure there's some fine print, like if coronavirus were to have hit you at any point during the season, right. whatever. Anyway, um, for people that had single uh, individual ticket sales, I think they were getting uh, refunded. I could be wrong on that, but I think that's what they were doing for the individual ticket sales as opposed to the uh, season ticket holders. Okay. Yeah. By the way, season ticket holders, uh, and anybody who bought special packs or whatever else, I don't have the Evander Kane Black Panther bobblehead, and I don't have the Broadcasters bobblehead, which I am extremely sad about. Was that one? That wasn't the whole arena. Wasn't that a special pack? No, that was ticket? a special pack. Both yeah. of them, or just the... Uh, no, the, I thought the arena, correct me if I'm wrong, I think the uh, everybody in the arena got the Kane one. And the Sharks Broadcasters was the special one. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not sure, guys. But if you uh, happen to have extras of those and you wouldn't mind, uh, you know, kind of donating to the show, we can showcase it here. and uh, Or maybe we could work <laughs> a trade or something, too, if you like. And Hernandez. Guys, you two are my go-to source for everything Sharks. I'd appreciate it if you created a series of videos showing us how to spot a real jersey versus fakes. I got duped on Ooh. eBay. I, I keep meaning to go find my my fake sharks one I've <laughs> talked about before. My dad went to Korea a long time ago um, and brought me back a sharks jersey that he found like on a street vendor. Yeah, it, it cost him like ten bucks or something. It was a Joe Thornton jersey, <laughs> and it looked like they had a a pixelized JPEG of the sharks logo and recreated it because it was really off. And re <laughs> like you just look at it and you're like, what? Nice. What is that? <laughs> um. I wish I could figure out how to get this to you, but if you're on Discord by chance, there's a uh, Sharks Sharks Reddit Discord channel, and there's a lot of guys in there who are really good eagle eyes uh, when it comes uh. to spotting authentics and whatnot, and they're a very friendly, fun community, and uh, I know one of the guys for sure uh, whose his name is Hero, H-I-R-O, on his handle at least, um, he goes to Barracuda games, so if you're local and you go to any of the Barracuda games or Sharks games or whatever, I'm sure you'd be able to meet up with them and maybe you know say hi, chat, get a drink, whatever. Uh, but I, I'm pretty sure um, that's a good resource for you in terms of being able to spot uh, the uh, the fakes from the reels uh, and, and whatever else. I honestly am probably not the right guy to tell you that. Uh, I wish I was, but I don't have that much money that I go out buying jerseys all the time so it's not something that I have an eye for right but yeah yeah I used to really be into it but yeah that's not so much anymore so sharks reddit if you're on reddit look for that sharks reddit and then maybe inquire about how to get in on the discord channel um, or if you're on reddit I'm sure the guys are there in reddit anyway and you could probably just ask them uh, but that's definitely a good uh, resource for you for being able to figure out uh, you know which jerseys are uh, authentic and which ones are not. I'm sure it did not feel good. I'm sorry that that happened to you uh, purchasing a, uh, a phony one there. So um, yeah, definitely check them out. What else? Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. No way Thornton ends his career like this, right? From Nicholas Egan. I don't think so. I think I he's coming back. I don't know. Oh, all of a sudden you think he's coming back now. Well, oh. because the Sharks didn't make playoffs. Yeah. Because of the way it ended, okay, I think he's gonna ha he has an even longer summer break, okay, so he can really get into good shape. Mm -hmm. I think he's gonna take care of himself and he's gonna come back. I think one more year. I think Patty does two, Jumbo does one. Okay. I think Patty still signs for one though. Well, yeah, but I, I think he can play. You think he'll do two more? Yeah. Okay. Not that he'll sign for two years. Nobody's gonna sign for two uh, years. Honestly, I, don't, I I think Patty might go even. He might go three. Well, let's reassess after two. Sure, we can do that. <laughs> He's got the legs, man. That guy. It's unstoppable. Awesome, dude. Um, 
there will be a lot of available seats next year. Yeah. I don't know, man. I think it would be a good bargain because I think the Sharks are going to be much better next year. I mean, all these young guys are getting a little bit of experience now. They're going to know what they need to work on and what it takes to play in the NHL, especially a grinding 82-game season. I think not every one of the guys that got called up, but I think there's going to be a handful that, that really uh, stick. I'm, I'm generally interested in draft and free agency. More so free agency than draft, actually. I'm generally interested, yeah. right? And even at the draft, I'm, I'm interested in, you know, what moves are they going to make? And usually it's something boring, like, ah, trading up for picks or whatever else, right? Uh, and it's not, like, player movement. But I, I'm, I'm genuinely, like, excited, like, really excited to see at the draft and at free agency what gets done. And maybe nothing will get done. I'm just hyping myself up for, for no reason. But I'm... I, I honestly, I think there's there's going to be a couple big moves. I think there's going to be a couple, like, nobody saw coming, which, whoa, you know. Um, I, I think, don't know. I just got this feeling. I think Burns gets moved. Free up some cap space. You and then he, they bring in some free agents or they trade for somebody and bring in a right winger. Who knows? Everyone's say, why don't you just move to right wing? Yeah. <laughs> so sick of that question. Because uh, it's not NHL 20 and you can't just put someone there because their overall is good. Anyway. Uh, Nicholas Egan, so much for that new bar the Sharks promoted. Only got to use it for a game or two. But it is nice. It's very it? nice. It's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's... I'm pretty sure they replaced the bar that was in the in the area, the open area. Yeah. Because uh, that wasn't there anymore. I don't, it was just I don't an information booth. Yeah. Um, so that bar was, it was kind of awkward. I don't know if you ever ordered any drinks there. Just the way the line goes back towards the seats, and then the flow of people walking through is just a mess. No, you know what? Thinking about that now, that bar that you're talking about was on the other side of the arena. No, the other side is where the stairs go down to go to the BMW lounge. The, there used to be a bar when you yeah. come up the stairs. There was a bar right there. Other way around. I'm pretty sure. Correct okay. me if I'm wrong, folks. Maybe I'm wrong. The escalators that go up, there wasn't a bar there at the escalators. The bar was. At, on the other so side of one bar where it went down. Yeah. Well, this. there's bars underneath in the club level. But well, I mean, yeah. on the concourse, on the concourse level, level, just that one. Yeah. Okay. So now they got now uh, they got three because potentially there's two. Uh, I don't know. I don't remember seeing that the other bar there anymore though. Maybe they moved that. That's what I think it replaced yeah. it. Okay. Uh, it okay. definitely looks nicer. It's way. You got nicer. a lot more room. The the flow of people. There's more space because that space wasn't even opened up yeah, before. Yeah. yeah. So well, and then, then you got people that are lined up at the old bar area, and people are trying to walk past them in line, right. and it's just, it was well, I mean, if you haven't seen it, go check out our spotlight on it. The bars, there's the main entrance where you walk in, and and when you look up, the bar's right on top of that entrance. Mm -hmm. So there's the big glass, the big um, I don't know, atrium, is that what it's called? Uh, not atrium, that's not the right word. I have my vocabulary is awesome. Basically, you walk in, you go up the escalator. If you do an about face on yeah. either side, uh, and you come right back. Uh, they built can, two platforms that go there yeah. on top of that space, and then there's two bars. So you, you don't have to wait in line for one, which right. is nice. Um, there's two different ones, and then in between that is just a bunch of high-top tables. A bunch of open space, yeah. So it's really cool, and it's a good It's good people watching, good and, view. And there's railing so you don't fall off. Right. You which know, is a plus. If you need that sort of thing. <laughs> Uh, the broadcast bobblehead was a special ticket, by the way. It was okay. All right. Well, if anyone happens to have extras of those uh, and you wanted to do like a, a trade or a donate or something like that, let us know. Uh, Hernandez said, "I missed the jumbo heater patty trio." Heater man, <laughs> I haven't heard that name in a while. Yeah. Uh, a fifty goal scorer, I'm an all star. <laughs> could the salary? This is from Nicholas Egan. Could the salary cap? be going down next season depending on how the season ends how would this affect the league caretaker said salary cap could definitely be affected since the nhl is losing 300 million dollars which is 10 million per team that's if they don't make up the games though right because if they make up those games they'll get that revenue back because i'm assuming they won't be playing in empty arenas I don't know. Even if they don't, you would think that increasing the salary cap would help them, you know, help them create like a more competitive team. And when you're coming off of a season where everything went like the way that it did, you would think that you'd want to give the owners every bit of extra help as possible to try to bring fans back in. We just got done saying that tickets are going to be cheap. 
right? So it's, uh, you you want to draw people in as best mm-hmm. you can. Why not give them keep you know the the extra cap space that you were planning on giving them anyway, and allow them to bring in you know a higher caliber players, um, you know that might fit into their system or whatever the case may be to try to give them the best chance to get fans to come back into the arena after something kind of a meltdown like this. So I don't know. I mean, maybe maybe it affects it, but yeah, I don't really know the whole economics yeah. of it. So. Plus, no team opens up their books to anybody. They're all privatized. So nobody really knows how much money they make or lose. It's just kind of what they tell us. Mm-hmm. I used to work at a unnamed bank that used to bank the Sharks a long time ago. Right. So I got to actually see the financials, wow. which was pretty cool. Um, this was years and years ago, so please don't get me in trouble. But um, it was pretty cool, and they were losing money. This was, I don't know, I'm going to say when. For this was at some point in time. During, right. During my life. At some point. During my adult life. Uh, <laughs> Hernandez brought something up that we have on the board. Okay. But we haven't talked about it yet. Fantasy. How, no, how are we oh, not yeah. talking about the roughing call versus Burns? Yeah, yeah. Well, we're that call completely changed the trajectory of the game against Chicago. I still believe the league has it against the Sharks for last year. You know, I, I'm, I'm uh, not a conspiracy theorist, yeah. but man, I believe that, dude. I do. <laughs> I believe it. It's crazy. There's just so much stuff that's gone wrong for San Jose. Yeah. And a lot of it's got to do with... You There's know, a lot of calls that calls. are that are like, really? Yeah. You called that against the Sharks or you didn't call yeah. that for the Sharks yeah. kind of thing? The only thing I can think of when Burnsy threw that hit that they might have seen was when he hit him, his arm kind of came up a little but An elbowing call would have made more exactly. sense than a roughing call. Exactly. Roughing is kind of like, really? That was, that was a pretty good hit. No, no, it was rough. He threw his butt out there. Don't get me wrong, it was rough. Yeah, but that but wasn't excessive. Like, it no. wasn't... That's what I feel like a roughing call is for, like, excessive stuff where you're kind of like, whoa, what are you doing? Roughing is for guys who, uh, you know, are on the on the verge of dropping the gloves to fight, but they didn't actually fight, yeah. so you give them roughing penalties, <laughs> like, right? Um no, I, I, that to me was not was not roughing. That to me was just a good solid body check, or a butt check, if you will. Um, and I I don't I didn't see any problem with that at all. Um, if you take a look at a hit like Subban on um, Brad Marchand years ago when Subban was still playing with, I want to say he was still playing with Montreal even, um, and he just leveled Marchand to next week. Uh, to the point where Marshan immediately got up and just hunched over and started skating back over to the bench. Didn't do anything, it just popped up, bench. And, I mean, that hit was just brutal. And it was the same type of thing. He threw his butt out there, mm-hmm. uh, got a nice big hip check, and just uh, annihilated him, right? Um, what I saw Burnsy do, it's it was just a good hit. It was just a good hit. Now, I, I, I understand. I'm a San Jose Sharks fan, okay? I have a show dedicated to being a San Jose Sharks fan, right? But... Um, yeah, I know it's amazing, right? But I, I mean, looking at that again, if you take the take the emblems off the jerseys, take the name off the back, just look at the head itself. It's just a guy throwing his butt out there and drilling someone. That's all it is. Do you think if that was Ryan Reeves, he would have gotten called? I don't think anyone should have gotten called. I mean, if it's Ryan Reeves, I would. I've I, seen Ryan Reeves throw dirtier hits yeah, yeah, than for that sure. and not get called for sure. That, that just. The name just came up. To, to me, yeah, no. To me, just that it was just a good hit. It was silly that 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 got called. Yeah. What else do we have up on here that we didn't talk about? Well, it's just the coronavirus, the Chicago game, fantasy, and then the um, San Jose employee. Yeah. What else? Do you have? Oh, the drafting and whatnot. Mark Cuban. Mark Cuban. Um, I put that up there because I saw it on uh, Twitter and I was actually really impressed. So. What happened was, and this is actually, it goes back to John Root first. Um, I know you're wondering, how's John Root and Mark Cuban? How they Anyway, um, John Root was there saying, you know, for those asking, yes, this uh, whole coronavirus thing absolutely does affect me. Um, you know, he's essentially kind of relying on, you know, doing uh, the in-host personality, mm-hmm. uh, you know, to, to get paid. That's his job, right? And so since he's not doing that, he's kind of like looking for work now. So um, as a uh, host or a presenter or anything like that. So if you're looking for someone for a, a function of yours 
like maybe say an auction or something like that where uh, you need a personality, somebody who can kind of maybe be like an MC kind of thing. I'm sure like a hype very, man. Yeah, like a hype man. Maybe you know, maybe we can get him on the show, be a hype man for us. That'd be dope. Uh, he's like, episode eighty three. <laughs> no, no. Um, I think it, uh, you know if, if you want to reach out to him, he would be more than thrilled to to you know take a look at that opportunity and it'd be kind of cool to be able to get John Root to do you know whatever function it is uh, that you or your organization may have. That'd be awesome. But what he was saying is essentially yes, it does. It hits me financially. Um, from there, I saw Mark Cuban, uh, owner of the Dallas uh, Mavericks, right? Mm -hmm. NBA. Since NBA shut down, one of the things he was saying was, I talked with my my um, I don't know management group, I guess whatever you want to call it, and uh, tried to figure out financially what would it cost or what would it take for us to take care of those employees because a lot of them, this is their job, this is what they're they're relying on mm -hmm. these paychecks. And so he's like, I, I, we don't have anything that like to announce yet, but it's we're in the works of trying to figure it out. It couldn't be that much money. These, most of these people are like to him. It's wage. probably yeah. To him, but it's probably not that much money. It's like a couple hundred thousand dollars. Maybe, yeah. And he's just okay, cool, not a problem. I can take care of you guys. Awesome, it's right? Good press, good Absolutely. PR. I, I, hey, he... I got a guy from the Fin Factor who is an NHL, a, a San Jose based NHL. It's a show. good marketing thing. Yeah. And so, you know, I just saw that and I was like, you know what? I just, I, I retweeted it and said, Fun no, fact, hey. though. He what? was very close to being the owner of the Pittsburgh Penguins. He okay. was, like, deal was almost done. And then all the other owners had to agree. And yeah. they said no. Because they wanted, they want him to be a silent owner. And he's not a silent kind of guy. And you, this was before, he, he didn't yeah. own the Dallas Mavericks. This was before he owned anything. He was, he had all his money and he wanted to buy yeah. a sports franchise. And the the penguins were up for sale, and he he was very close to doing it. I think he had the paperwork in, yeah. and then they said no because he, in his words, it was they wanted a silent owner. They didn't want me to be out there. Yeah. But look what he's done to Dallas. I don't know if you're familiar with the wallet I'm, stuff. I'm not. No. What he's doing now, what he's looking into, is basically what he did. He took this franchise and said, "I'm dumping all this money to make it a pl a destination for players to want to come. So they're going to have the best." Um, the best buses, the best charter plane, the best you know uh, amenities like mm -hmm. massage tables, like all this stuff, and take care of their players. And uh, he built this huge franchise out of it. They won a couple championships yeah. out of it. He could have been in hockey doing that, but the owners are a big you know tight knit group of uh, <laughs> yeah good old boys basically, and he was not welcome into the group. So well, he was very sour on the NHL. Sounds like that. he's ex extending that um, you know great. The ownership and, and investing in his players and and staff he's in, investing into those those other staff members that help run the arena who are now out of uh, jobs essentially until the nba picks back up so that sounds like he's going to be uh forking out some uh some bonus checks to all those uh, those folks and i just thought it was awesome and i actually I, I like i said i put it on twitter and i wrote it on the board something i wanted to bring up uh so thank you to whoever kind of where we got to that point there because I, again i just thought it was really cool of him uh, to do something like that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, speaking of owners, could you see Hasso ever selling the Sharks now that we're on the topic of owners from Deuces? Ever sure. selling the Sharks? I mean, I guess, but... Uh, at some point, yeah. it'll, they'll probably sell, or he'll probably sell, but uh, I don't know why... <laughs> it's so funny. People get so, like, the owner is non-existent. <laughs> Who cares? He's bankrolling it, right? That's the thing. Like, as long as... It, for, so it's not like Hasso, he's on a tight budget where he's like yeah. only spend to the floor. Hasso is is doing his job in allowing Doug Wilson to spend the cap, and his trust. Yeah, his trust in the organization that's going to run well. Yeah, I mean we've talked about this before. I think months Ottawa. ago. Oh, well, just about in general of how okay. the owner. Well, yeah, Ottawa, but like the owner Hasso. Um, owners don't care. This is not their main business. Yeah, it's this is not where they get their it's main... their side hustle. <laughs> it is their side hustle. Not even a hustle. This is their bragging rights. When they billionaires get together and they yeah. talk about stuff like, oh, you know, I'm yeah, no, cool. I like... Uh, no, that's it's a good Ferrari you got there. I right. got, you know, whatever. I got a sports team. <laughs> but then there's, <laughs> then there's owners that don't have a lot of money right. that get a team. Mark Davis of the Oakland Raiders, soon to be Vegas Raiders, is a very good example mm -hmm. where they don't have a lot of cash, a lot of money... They just owned that team for so long and it stayed in the family. Why do you think he gets his haircut the way it is? Have you seen what he looks like? Mark Davis? Yeah. Yeah, he looks like a goof. Yeah. yeah. He goes to the same barber, flies down to like Southern California to get the same 
full haircut that he got from when he was like eight years old. <laughs> like it's ridiculous. He looks like a clown. Anyway, um, you get owners like that yeah. in like Ottawa. They just they don't have any money. They yeah, don't want to spend it. See, to me, that I, if it was an uh, if I was an Ottawa fan, I'd be upset as uh, with the owner in that they never seem to spend the amount of money they should be spending to have a competitive hockey team. So it, for me, the owner, his job is just allow the GM to spend money. <laughs> and Hasso, by all rights then, is a phenomenal owner because there's there's at no point has Doug Wilson been like, well, we're strapped for cash, except when they're up against the cap. So I, I think I originally said he was the CEO of SAP. I, I'm incorrect because he's no longer the CEO. Okay. He's the founder of okay. SAP. Uh, but he is on the board and everything, but he's just not the CEO. And I gotcha. wanted to correct that from sure. months ago, whatever. Um, but Caretaker wanted to said, uh, I only found out who the Sharks owner is because of this channel. Because <laughs> we talked about oh, really? it. <laughs> yeah, because he's not, he's not a yeah. Mark Cuban type player where right, he's right, on right. the sideline every game. I mean, there are owners like that in the NHL where they're in the box every night. Probably Mary Lemieux, I think, probably mm -hmm. maybe not so much anymore every game. But uh, there are owners like that high profile ones that like to be seen like the camera whatever and there's some that aren't like that they don't really care they just you know do your thing I own you here's the money figure it out make me look good I own you <laughs> alright um, <laughs> Zinxy gents how's the evening recap me on what were all the questions oh god man <laughs> this is insane he said just kidding rewind he said just kidding yeah I know um Hey, by the way, Zinxie, uh great to have you uh, back on NHL 20. He Is jumped he back? In. He jumped ah. in with us. Yeah. And uh, I think we might have him hooked because he played with, first of all, he played with me. So <laughs> That made him go, oh, why did I do this? It's mostly the comic relief on, on the, the mic. But uh, no, uh, Nick... The, the you know you know Nick yeah. the stud yeah, yeah. right yeah. Uh, Nick and uh, his, his buddy that dude Knight uh, yeah um, those two guys uh, and he's playing I don't think he actually might have played with uh, that dude Knight but he played with with uh, Nick and they they meshed really well he said wow you guys got really good yeah all of a sudden we have a team that's like ah that's not bad maybe I'll play it's not bad and oh not no, 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 goal. no don't bring us back down we were doing fine I'll play center actually he plays center, <laughs> he plays center. <laughs> I'll play right winger okay sure why not Nick likes to play defense. Yeah, Nick is a lefty. Yeah, but he's like an offensive. But he, he no, no, no. So Nick and, and I'll just we'll, we'll jump to another topic after this. But uh, Nick is a left defenseman who um, likes rushing all the way down to the goalie's post, uh, not his goalie, the other goalie. So <laughs> he runs all the way in all the time, and he's so deep. It's like I'm left wing. I'm like there for like the one timer, and I see Nick is like right there. I'm like I'll back up and play D, I guess. So it actually works he's really well. Covering. No, exactly. It works really well because he likes to jump up, and I'm I think defensively half the time, so uh, it works out pretty well. Uh, Super Chiaro, do you think Bugner gets replaced next season, and do you miss Pete DeBoer at all? I don't miss Pete. I liked him as a coach. I think yeah. he's a very good coach, but I think uh, his message did get a little stale. I think maybe not even his message, but the style wasn't working this year. His system wasn't working. I feel like it that got stale where other teams predicted it. It was too predictable. It needed to get changed. Uh, our goalies are getting exposed too much. And uh, I think Bugner was the right call. Just the, his strategy, at least, and how to... It's not even quite his whole strategy. This yeah. is just a Band-Aid slap over Pete DePore's system because it's too late to train the team into a new system. I don't mind Bugner. I think if we stick with Bugner, it's going to be a grinding out type of year in terms of uh, the games are going to be a lot more grindy. Kind of like what we saw in the last two months. Yeah. A little bit more skill because we'll have Hurdle back, Couture back, and who knows who else would they add in the summer. Um, but it'll be low-scoring games. I'll say that. Yeah, I, I kind of think so. I think that that's the way that it, if they, they keep him around, he gets to fully implement, and I'm sure that's what they'll end up doing. Um, yeah, I think... Uh, I mean, I like Bugner. I like I like what he's done. You know, the funny thing is, again, like, do you, do you miss Pete DeBoer? I don't. I didn't have a problem with him at all. I don't. I was kind of sad to see that he left, but I, I can understand why. If um, you have kids, or if you remember back to when you were a kid, and your parents tell you to to do something, and you're like, whatever, mom and dad, whatever, you know, you don't listen to them, right? Or your kids don't listen to you, um, and then you have somebody else who is not you. Uh, as a parent, saying the same exact thing, and all of a sudden they listen. Right? Oh yeah, you see it from your kids when you coach them. Right? Exactly. Yeah. So I tell my kids, "Hey man, you know you gotta you gotta skate harder or whatever. You know, you, you, I, I see how fast you can skate, but you're not doing it. Like skate a little bit harder here, and then they don't do it. And then if 
the other coach tells him, hey, man, skate harder. All of a sudden, he takes off. Yep. So it's like, you know, it's the same message, but maybe he's heard it from me too many times, so he has to hear it from somebody else. Kind of the same thing, right? So Bugner jumps in there. His message is more or less the same type of message that Pete DeBoer was saying, right? Because there's a whole different, uh, no, it's the same system. He doesn't have time, like you said, to implement an entirely new system. All he was doing was kind of tweaking things here and there. And he did get them to play much better defensively, which is great. But I'm pretty sure Pete DeBoer's message was knock it off, play better defensively. And they weren't really listening to that. Um, not like necessarily deliberately, but again, sometimes you just need. Uh, a new voice, even if it's the same message. So uh, having said that, I think that uh, Bob Booner, I would love to have him back. I think he's done a great job mm -hmm. uh, considering that he's been able to only take uh, bits and pieces of maybe a system that he would like to implement, and he's done so well with it. So I wouldn't mind seeing him come back. I, I'd, I'd love to have him get another shot at it with a full season in front of him and, and see where it goes. I wouldn't be surprised if he hired other assistants, though. Because only because early in the season, I feel like Ricci yeah. didn't really want that role. It was more of like, okay, well, they need somebody and I got to fill it. So, kind of thing. P a part of me thinks that um, the guys that are currently, I think it's Bono, I think is the, uh, the, one of the last names of the, the coaching staff in the AHL. And um, I forget whoever else it is, but I don't know, John McCarthy just jumped into that role mm -hmm. because of his, his uh, health issues. Um, I wonder if they've uh, if they're kind of married to the idea of kind of sticking around there and and kind of growing their coaching game as well. I wonder if Roy Summer is going to end up going back and like you said, Mike Ricci as well. Um, I think Evgeny Nabokov might stick around though. I could see that. I could definitely see that because he, he, he's it's worked well with with Dell and with Martin Jones actually. Yeah. So he's the goalie whisperer. Yeah, I, I, you know what. And he learned from one of the best, like Martin. Yeah. Was it Martin Strelo? Strelo. Strelo? Yeah. yeah. Um, I can't I couldn't remember his first name for a second there, but Warren's, yeah, it's Warren. Warren Strelo. Warren Strelo. Thank you. Yeah, I'm thinking Martin Jones. Uh, yeah, Warren Strelo. Um, he was a, a phenomenal goalie coach. Mm -hmm. uh, very tight with Evgeny Nabokov, and um, I remember that uh, affecting him uh, greatly when Warren passed, and he was very sad about that. But um, kind of, actually, there was an interview that I did with with him uh, at uh, his what do you call it? Um, inauguration into the San Jose Sports Hall of Fame of Kenny Nabokov. And if you check that episode out, it's me interviewing him with a gnarly mustache uh, from November. Two years <laughs> it's ago. pretty bad. Uh, but yeah, I, I was kind of asked him about that and, you know, I said, you know, it's kind of nice that you're able to kind of take, you know, you were, you were learning from one of the best and then, you know, here you are kind of stepping into that role and taking everything that you were taught and being able to flip that and teach these younger uh, goaltenders so it's it's got to be you know a, a great experience for you, and he kind of spoke to that a little bit. But um, I could definitely see him doing that. I, maybe he likes working with the younger guys more so than the more established guys. But it doesn't seem to matter what age you are; it seems to be working. So um, hopefully he sticks around because we can use all the help we can get. Good. Okay. Uh, next question I got. Besides Ferraro, which rookie do you think shows the most promise? I don't know, but your transitions are phenomenal, by Thanks. the way. Okay. Uh, which rookie shows the most promise? Cool story, bro. <laughs> uh, I'll say Noah Gregor. Wow, okay. Because in this last game, it was the NHL. It was on uh, NBC Sports. Mm -hmm. So it was nationally broadcast. And those guys in between periods were talking about him and how great he was doing. Uh, so the fact that those guys highlighted him I was like, wow, they picked him out of all the yeah. rookies on the team that are on right now. There's a lot of them. Uh, and they were showing all the good stuff that he was doing. Yeah. I feel like he's kind of, um, he's kind of, uh, his pedigree is supposed to be decent because he was, what was he? He was a, uh, I guess, a fourth round pick. Not that high, but not that low. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, what do you mean by promise? Like a star player? Because he won't be a star player, no. but he'll be an NHL player. Right. I'll say that. Um, I think Alex True got a taste of the limelight, and I think that's going to help propel him through development camp and training camp, and I think he's going to have a great camp. And um, I, don't know, I still feel like he's he's one of those NHL caliber guys. He could be you know, one of those big, strong, third-line scoring type guys. Mm -hmm. um, brings everything to the table, you know. Um, energy. A big body, physical, can score. Um, I think he brings a whole heck of a lot. So uh, he may not be ready this coming season. May even take another season beyond that. But I'm I'm looking forward to him getting a real good look and and getting a good shot there. 
And uh, I think it all starts next season, obviously, because this season's kind of dead and gone. Yeah. So, um, but no, I think you're absolutely right, nail on the head with Mario Ferraro. He's definitely the uh, the top For uh, sure. rookie uh, the, coming out of this season and uh, going into the next. I'm sure. So um, we'll see how that goes. But for me, um, I'd like to see a little bit more of, of Alex True, and and hopefully he has a good camp. Uh, here's a question for local people from. And Hernandez, guys, what's your opinion about the Red House rib place behind SAP Center? I see Giant Lions, but is it really worth it? And he's talking about Henry's High Life. Have you been there, the barbecue place? Yeah. So um, they're they're they've been around a long time. In fact, that building's been there, I think, before the 1906 earthquake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's one of the older buildings in San Jose, but uh, it's it's delicious if you like barbecue. Probably not the best barbecue, but it's definitely not terrible. There's not really terrible barbecue but the way that they it's kind of funky how you order because you go in this is why there's long lines you go in you put your name in they ask you what you want and so you put your order in and then when you go when they finally seat you because they kind of take people in shifts yeah you finally get sat you have your salad and your if you already need appetizers it's already right there so then by the time you finish your salad here comes your food so they just they prep it and it's all ready so it's fast and they get you in and out of there so the lines are because you order your food before you even sit down. Uh, and then there's a bar when you first walk in. I don't know if you ever walked inside, but the, when you first walk in, it's the bar. Um, and on game days, it's really long lines because people are trying to either yeah. get in and eat or just drinking at the bar and taking up space. But it's pretty good. There's other barbecue places that are not too far away um, that are near if you really want barbecue. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a bunch of other little places around. One of them actually right across facing... Um, Henry's High Life right there is Enoteca La Storia. Uh, it's an Italian wine bar, but they serve food. They have a they have a pizza oven, um, like legit wood fired pizzas. It's really good, uh, and they have some other foods and stuff too. So that's not yeah, a bad place. I feel like most people go the other side, the San Pedro Square. Yeah, right for Definitely. for eating and whatnot. So um, you know, while there may be long lines, maybe that area, that little Italy area, mm -hmm. um, got some some gems. Um, to hit before uh, before game time, and maybe uh, maybe a few less people to deal with than you would in and San Pedro. Enotech is really large too. Mm -hmm. It's like three separate rooms plus a huge outdoor patio, so there's a lot of space. So they it can especially on game days, it can yeah. accommodate a lot of people. If you just want maybe drinks and some food, um, you probably get in and out of there pretty quick. And um, if just in that sure small little area, yeah. little Italy area. Um, so sorry, that was a. Uh, tangent there, but it was a good question. Yeah. Um, someone asked if you think Carlson wants to get traded next year and people are answering it. No, I don't think he does. He did sign a long-term contract because he wants to be here. Yeah. Um, he doesn't want to uproot his uh, his family again, so I think he's I think he's set. Uh, da, da, da. I blame Dowdy for the amount we paid EK65. Yeah. Dowdy is not worth it, but we had to pay EK more than Dowdy. I agree. That's that's probably why his salary is so high because you set the mark and then you got to beat it every time. You know? If if we didn't, somebody else would have. That's essentially what it comes down to. Yep. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Nathaniel, for the four ninety nine. If the NHL does resume, are the current standings and points final? Would they just go into the playoffs and how would playoffs play out if resumed at the end of April? We kind of covered this in the beginning of the show. That's why I wasn't really answering your question earlier. Sorry, but now that you paid me the cash money now i gotta I answer right to, yeah so um uh we don't know yet there's a chance that they could play the remaining games um it kind of sounded like they're leaving the possibility they did ask all the league or all the teams in the league to to leave all of july open for games which would mean probably condensing that last 12 games into a couple weeks and then doing playoffs from there um that would push playoffs back maybe three weeks two weeks or so, depending on how long the series go. Each you series. July? Into Keep July. July. Open. Yeah. Usually they finish in June. Yeah. So, um, but that would give them a little bit of cushion if they needed to stay longer. Yeah. Stay out longer. Because I mean. then they're pushing for agency and everything. Yeah. They'd have exactly. To. So, I think they're going to try and do everything that they can to f play those games mm -hmm. because that's revenue for them. Uh, but if it's not realistic, then they won't. And I could see them possibly just saying here, this is the end of the season, and we're just going to go into playoffs and start up again. There you go. And thank you for the 499. I do appreciate yeah. that. Um, all right, let me go back here a little bit. 
Some Which, by the uh, way, uh, if you uh, wanted instead to uh, get maybe some stickers out of that, <laughs> we are selling selling stickers at our store, thefinfactor.com. I'll plug that right now. about to put in there right now. Uh, yeah, so thefinfactor.com, there's the three little lines at the top. Click that. says support the show. Uh, that is what you're doing because all those proceeds go to helping us run this. So if you're enjoying it, that's kind of how we're doing it. So uh, that $4.99, uh, could put that towards the sticker pack, the three stickers for $5. Again, it really just helps support the show is what you're doing. So thank you. But we also have shirts. We have hats as well. And the shirts are uh, three different colors, uh, gray, teal, and black. And then we have the black deep V cut for the uh, women's shirts as well. So um, if you want to support the show that way as well, you can actually get something out of it. That'd be great too. All right. Moving right along. Uh, going back to Cormorant on a Rock. Cormorant. Probably pushing that. <laughs> he only asked about EK because in the interview he gave the following that he announced his thumb surgery saying um, something like I didn't sign here for eight years thinking we'd rebuild so he the commenter thinks that EK was saying he wants out because he doesn't want to be part of a rebuild I think what he was saying is we're not going to be rebuilding exactly I see this team as being a strong team they're going to come back next year and the next couple years and be strong yeah. that's the way I took it yeah. I don't think he was digging it and saying He's not that vindictive. Kinda. I also don't think Doug Wilson's going to go through a rebuild. Right. I don't. I. I. I th yeah. I think it. It was taken just the wrong way. I think that he's. He's saying. Uh, you know. I didn't do that to 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 go through a rebuild because that's not what we're going to do. And I think Doug Wilson's track record speaks to that. So. Uh, super producer Jason says, "Hey, the stream worked without super producer Jason." That's amazing. Can you believe isn't it? it? I don't know. I'm Sometimes sure. I amaze myself. Um, <laughs> let's do roll call real quick. Tell us where you are watching from, how you found us, and Super Producer Jason, where are you uh, <laughs> watching us from, and how did you find us? <laughs> are you in the house? Yeah, is he there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, Too he's late. not here. Late. I'm gonna laugh. He comes down the stairs yeah. like, "Ha ha, fooled you." <laughs> um, if they resume the season, will they play the rest of it in empty arenas? I don't think so. If they resume the season, it'll be because the, everyone else is like, yeah, fine. It's because time. it's over. We're okay. We can all reconvene. That's why they'll recon. They'll, they'll they'll do the season over again, and uh, yeah, then they would just have people show up at the arenas again. Uh, Hernandez, guys, tough and odd question. How do I become a Spanish Sharks voice broadcaster? I want to bring in the soccer following folk. I can sell hockey as the best version of soccer. They started that. Two years ago, halfway through last season, I know they have. They started um, a Twitter in Spanish. They did. Yeah. Yes, they did. They There's did. an official Twitter in Spanish, and I know they were broadcasting some, if not all, the game. Halfway through last year, I think they started broadcasting the games in Spanish. Okay. I think that carried through this year, so I think they already have one for radio. I don't know about TV. Um, I would contact the Sharks. Um, in fact, I would just contact. Maybe the Spanish Sharks Twitter account because yeah. there's less followers on there than I was the gonna normal say, one. They'll probably get back to you because they're probably not getting inundated with tweets. Yeah. So um, that's where I would go. Yeah, I imagine I would just reach out to them directly. But you're probably a moot point because you're reaching out to what you are trying to do, which is already there. So um, I mean, I wish you the best of luck in that, obviously. But uh, just as a heads up. Yeah, I don't know how old you are. If you're like in college or something, it'd be a good internship yeah. possibility or something to there learn. You go. Um, and I don't know if you have any experiences because they're going to want a bunch of experience for that. Yeah. But good luck. Um, Jason is in Carmel on vacation after a massage. <laughs> uh, Caretaker one is in Hollister. Um, <laughs> Ricky, Ricky says, "Yo, I was promised zombies with my global pandemics. Where are the zombies at? <laughs> Just wait. Just wait. They're coming. Oh yeah, you want to go get it? I can go get them. All right." I will be right back. <laughs> this is going to get ugly. We're okay, going to get right. the... You want to tell him? Yeah, I'm just tell him. Here, I'm going to mute. All right, we're going to... Uh, Paul's going to go run to the car real quick and go get the smelling salts. Yeah. My car unlocks with my phone. <laughs> so, uh, so you guys are in for a treat tonight because we're going to do the smelling salts on the air, live. And I hope it doesn't make us throw up like it's somebody said it might. Um, well, Jason's not here. He'll be watching. But he's not here. Um, by the way, they call they called it a pandemic, not an epidemic. 
Oh, they did call it a pandemic. For some reason, I thought it was epidemic. I know the game is called Pandemic. Um, uh, Patrick's at Fort Smith, Arkansas. Not that he wants to be here. Been following us since the beginning. Thanks, Patrick. And he also runs the Xbox team if you're on uh, playing NHL 20 on Xbox. <laughs> Super producer Jason just said, get a bucket and don't throw up. Uh, no promises. My car unlocks with my phone, big baller. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Model 3. Uh, Not exactly the most expensive car on the market. I wouldn't be surprised if they test all players and then start back up without fans. I'm sure they're already testing the players. I think they already have not fans right now. <laughs> There's yeah. a whole bunch of people that so are... So what kind of warning is on that so, thing? Um, <laughs> first aid only, first of all. <laughs> Ammonia inhalants, 10 single-use capsules, 15% solution. I don't know if that's a lot or a little or what. You break it, right? Open. Did I you have break it? I have no idea. If anyone's used these before, uh, why don't you go ahead and let us know. Maybe we have to watch you know, like a YouTube video to get this thing down. Uh, what kind of ads? Yeah. I'll mute no, no, let's just do it. Am I muted right now? I, I don't know. I don't know. Can you guys hear me? I'm going to check the meter real quick. I'm going to check your mic. <laughs> um, now they can hear me. What kind of ads position? What kind of? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna deuces. You kind of wrote this funny. What kind of positions do you think the sharks will add in free agency? I think is what he's trying to say. Um, and Hernandez also says, "I got to say, you guys helped take in this rough season a lot easier. Thanks, guys. You're welcome. Appreciate that. Thank you. Um, seasons go up and down." For, for the Sharks lately, they've been going up until this year. I mean, they missed playoffs now twice in the last 15 years or so. That's pretty crazy. Um, I mean, imagine if we still had our first round pick or if we lottery protected it, which Doug Wilson Jr. said that they really tried to do and Ottawa wouldn't budge on it. Um, I don't think it would be as bad, you know? Like, I, do you think people would be so pissed? They'd probably still be pissed that the Sharks were losing. What's wrong? If what? If we had lottery protected our our first rounder for Oh, no, it Carlson. wouldn't be as bad. It wouldn't be as bad. If we had that pick? Yeah, if we still had that pick, nobody would be upset. About the, yeah. I still think people would still be upset. Well, maybe. Burn it all down and get more first round picks. <laughs> uh, Paul, we can do it. Do I need to find... You are not muted. I, I know that. I, do oh. I need to find a bucket? Is this going to be that bad? It can't be that bad. I've never seen anyone throw it from these things. I have no idea. These are mainly when you get knocked out. Yeah. This brings you... Supposed to wake you up. Yeah. Well, we'll see how this goes. This is going to be fun. Take another question. I'm going to look this for... This is not a coronavirus test, Jason. <laughs> you know what this is. We're doing the smelling salts. We still haven't gotten the Vegemite from Australia. Who knows where that's ending up these days. It's probably stuck in customs somewhere. Um... Where are you going? This is, uh, we're past the hour mark, so uh, it's going off the rails here. Oh, is it? Okay. Oh, we got a just, bucket. Just in you case. take the garbage yeah, out just, of it. Uh, whatever. There's two buckets here. Okay. Oh, good. Give me one. I'm keeping it on my side. No, you can take the one with the garbage in it. That's fine. That's good. Good for you. Okay. All right, so what, what do we do? <laughs> there should be instructions. On <laughs> crush once and discard. Crush once and discard. Crush. You guys are way too spooked for this. Here. And now I just don't know what I'm supposed to do. Cru do you just break it? Like smash it? Uh, I have no idea. What Vegemite's probably <laughs> rotting in customs somewhere from Jason. Guys, I was trying to learn what makes a great defenseman, but there aren't really any individual stats that help identify great defensemen, and the Norris seems to be a popularity contest. Help. That's a good question. The Norris was? Well, oh, how do you determine yeah. who's a good defenseman? Well, there's yeah. kind of two defensemen. Offensive and defensive. That's why we think there should be two awards. Norris should be Norris defensive. and Bobby Orr. And then the Bobby Orr yeah. should be offensive. So offensive would go to the defensive who has the most points. Defensive would be... That would be kind of harder to judge as a defensive defenseman. What kind of stats would you use? Not so much plus minus. Typically you would... Yeah, they would have aimed at plus minus. But obviously with advanced stats, they're way beyond that now. So I mean, that could almost be a popularity contest where they ask the players to vote who do you think is the best defensive defenseman based yeah. on who you played against yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. 
Actually, I think what they should do is maybe ask the top scorers in the league. Ha, that's a good. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But how do you determine that? The top 50 scorers get to decide. Yeah, points, essentially, or goals, or whatever, you know. I'd say top 100. Yeah. Tear apart and gentle wave smelling salt under the nose. Yeah. So, okay, and, and I don't have my glasses on. We just put it in half, right? Okay, let me see here. Uh, hold inhalant away from face and crush between thumb and forefinger. Carefully approach crushed put inhalant. My computer down to not so I don't drop it. It's, it's, it's funny the way they say this. Carefully approach. Yeah, don't shove it up. Crushed your nose. inhalant. No, but you're supposed you to break go, it in half. You're supposed to like approach this? the inhalant. <laughs> no, I think you just pinch it. There like it is. That. Oh yeah. Oh god. Oh, Jesus. Should I just use yours? Yeah. Okay, hold on. Oh, it's a deep burn. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. I think we need yeah. to do this before every hold show. Hold on a sec. Whoa. Dude, you took a... Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, why am I still holding it by my nose? Oh, it's like wasabi. Like, it's... wow. Whew. Oh, that'll wake you up. Yep. Now I understand. When they're on the bench, they're like... Yep. <laughs> You should be oh jeez! Wow, sorry if I'm yelling. Holy, my eyes are watering. A okay, bit. <laughs> enough of that. <laughs> Don't take a large smell. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe I should have read that before. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Holy, why, why did it turn uh, red? Oh. Hold on, it's red. So you know that it's broken. Yeah, I guess so. Cause yeah, normally it's just like this. So you know it's already. I guess. Don't smell it. No, it's like probably blood from your nose that's dripped all over the thing. God. Oh. Okay, well, you know, and actually, it's uh, you come down pretty fast from that, though, so it's okay. It's not bad. Yeah. But uh, the initial punch to the face was... I think that's how we start every show from now yeah, on. Yeah, just like that. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Fit Factor <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, uh, that was fun. Now eat time. the smelling salt. And now I'm waiting. <laughs> no, I mean, I'll try the Vegemite if it ever comes. But, wow. Oh, jeez. Oh, Please super yeah. chat this. It's still in there. Any super chat money, we have to do it again. Oh, my God. What? Is that any super chat money? We have to do it again. Oh, uh, no. We have to hit a dollar amount if you want me to do that again. <laughs> Jeez. Don't even ask what it, it is. It's a burn. I don't know yet. I felt it like <laughs> in my throat. <laughs> Tasted it almost. Uh. If uh, if you guys would like, and we have some sort of a meetup at some point in time, I will bring the rest of these, <laughs> and you guys can try it that out. That seems for like a liability. That, to me. And no, no, no. I'm just hey, I'm, I'm not gonna do it for you. I'm right. just if you happen to take one of the nine that I have left, then go for it. There you go. Uh, <laughs> Jason just said a hundred dollars and do it again. I'd do it. Each. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what else we got? Now we're Come on, really I got energy. I'm amped, ready to go. Now we're really off the rails. <laughs> we got everything. Uh, fantasy. Yeah. Let's talk about fantasy hockey real quick. More of how many of you are in fantasy hockey leagues and what are you going to do? Are yeah. you going to wait it out? Are you going to end the season? Right now, the two leagues that I'm running for the show, we are in the first round of playoffs. In my big money league, we're in the semifinals. So we're in the, in the top four. <laughs> I think it's already gone. <laughs> I didn't even really see it. <laughs> anyway, that go ahead. Sorry. Up. Big money leagues. Fire away. <laughs> That's messed up. I'm watching it replay right now on my laptop. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to do. Yeah. That's, That's the thing. Okay. So I'm still figuring out in our league. Um, I'm kind of in a holding pattern on what the NHL is going to do. If the NHL is going to play out those games, then we just wait and then... Um, set our lineups yeah. when they come back. Otherwise, if they announce the end of the season, then we're just going to have to say, all right, top three get prizes? I don't really know. Okay. In my big money league, we have a Stanley Cup replica trophy. Mm -hmm. I want to put, for the winner, COVID-19. <laughs> nice. I, why not? If, the, if there's no more, it's the end. We were in the middle of the semifinals. Like, the week it is halfway through. And so there are stats that have accumulated. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Smelling salt zapped our brains, and the rails are gone. Uh, <laughs> why are you guys yelling? Use your inside voice. I'm sorry. It was the smelling salts. Just what? Uh, my my uncle <laughs> says they don't recommend using them anymore. <laughs> the fire department stopped carrying them years ago. Where did you find them? <laughs> <laughs> 
Uncle Dan. Uh, yeah, no, I just got them from uh, just over the counter stuff. So maybe not as potent as. Did you buy the them stuff at CVS? I, I forget where it was. I got. Oh no, you know what? I think it was on Amazon. The black market. No, no, I think it was on Amazon. <laughs> black market. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was. Uh, I think it was Amazon. I picked them up. I'm pretty sure. Why did he say they don't use it anymore? I don't know. The firefighters probably, stopped using them. Yeah, That's pretty it's bad. Probably, yeah, probably shouldn't do any more of those. We so, see him uh, do it all the time on the in hockey. Yeah, on the bench. Yeah, just waving it underneath yeah. the nose. I don't think they're getting them from they Amazon go. though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Man. usually followed by a few woos in there too. But, uh, yeah, anyway, <laughs> right. Uh, let's also talk about what are we gonna do? Yeah, for the show. So we don't even we don't know what to do for the rest of our time here with the show for the rest of the season. So um, if you guys have some suggestions for us on what we ought to do. Um, let us know. It doesn't necessarily mean we're going to pick one. It doesn't necessarily mean we have anything. Some of these really. that we want to give away. Oh, I'd love to. Uh, yeah, there are definitely um, some certain ones that I wouldn't mind uh, unloading. I have no problem with that. Certain ones that I uh, they're, they're mine, so uh, I want to keep them. Or I've made trades, and obviously I traded for something that I really liked, so I'd like to keep it. But uh, if there's other stuff we have uh, extras of, I know we have some Martin Jones ones. Uh, a couple of them, I think. So, um, yeah, there's there's some other ones that you guys maybe want to we, trade for. Love we have to. a boneyard of broken ones if anyone wants <laughs> some pieces. <laughs> we do, yeah. There's uh, the Owen Nolan uh, doing to, the point. We should dig a grave for each one. I, <laughs> there's so many. Didn't I? So many. I wish I could show you. They're they're off on the side. There's just, there's, let me show you this yeah, one. Yeah, just, just really go grab bad. it. It's okay. It's over. It's so <laughs> no big deal. Um, uh, yeah, this is just a I'm joke. sorry for Logan Couture getting injured it's this a, year. Yeah. This one's the worst one. Uh, he lost both <laughs> legs, both arms, and his head. I mean, it's just it's just his body. This is just because this table gets bumped, <laughs> one of them falls off, and they just explode. They don't just like break in half; they explode. There's pieces everywhere. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave this yeah, on top of Timmy time. <laughs> it's so bad. Oh, I just realized we're not gonna move that clock up at all anymore. Yeah, maybe. No, uh, well, okay. If the season comes possible. back, and it's yeah, possible. for sure, but. Yeah. Yep. There you go. All right. Well, uh, basically, yeah, we don't know what we're going to do um, for the rest of our time here uh, for this season, at least. So if you've got some suggestions, please feel free to uh, fire those uh, into the chat right now. Or um, if you want to, if you've got a really good idea and you're serious about it and you want to either uh, tweet us or email us or uh, some form of social media letting us know what you think. I mean, they're taking a 30 day break. Is that what it was? Is that what they announced? I'm not sure. I mean, it depends. They may say a 30 day break and then say, ah, we're just going to cancel the whole season. Right. But I think we could probably do a show maybe in like two weeks, three weeks, if anything has happened or if there's any news. Sure. We'll come back on. Otherwise. Yeah, I mean, we if don't it's much to talk about. Look, if it's if it's dead from here on out, there's absolutely nothing going on. Then you're probably not going to hear much from us, which is unfortunate because I do love doing this with you guys. Um, if something happens, like today, right. we don't normally do a show on Thursday nights, right? So uh, it was just kind of big news that what I thought it was Wednesday. Yeah, God. <laughs> you're just you need some more smelling salts. Yeah, or? okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so <laughs> we don't normally do shows on Thursday nights, so. Uh, this was kind of a big thing, though, obviously, with the whole coronavirus shutting down uh, not just the NHL, but leagues, right? NHL, AHL, NBA, MLS. Um, it, it was just a really big deal, and we thought, you know, we should probably jump in the studio and kind of uh, talk to our fan base a, a little bit about it. So, um, But, yeah, I mean, again, if, if nothing's going on, you're probably not going to hear anything from us. But if something pops up, I'm sure we'll just jump back in the studio, give you guys a little bit of notice. And, uh, and go from there. But uh, in terms of like a regular schedule, I don't think we're... Maybe talk favorite Sharks moments in Sharks history. We could. We kind of did that our very first like five episodes. Yeah, yeah. But we could we can revisit that because that was a while ago. Yeah, we get a little more creative instead of um, uh, just talking, um, you know, this year, Sharks. <laughs> During this break, we would like to see you guys develop a smelling salt addiction just so you're constantly pumped. <laughs> You know what, though? Somebody said it already. He said, you know, this season seems a lot worse after talking with you guys, right? That's what Better, you mean. Better, right. Yeah. Well, not Doesn't not as seem worse. as... Right. Doesn't yeah. seem as bad, right? So the season seems better. Um, so I don't know. Patrick Abral said an outdoor show with the fans. That's not a bad idea. Yeah, but then what do we talk about? It's the only problem. The it's season. An, an outdoor the show. season recap. What was your favorite moment? Okay. What was your least favorite moment? Least favorite moment? What was your least favorite moment this season? 
Probably Hurdle going down again. Oh, that was sad. Yeah, when Hurdle went down um, and Finito, yeah. For me, that, that, that hurt. That hurt a lot in my soul. Mine's the coronavirus. Just... No, I'm just kidding. Shutting everything down? <laughs> it, it, that was ripping the Band-Aid off on this season, so okay. I don't mind it so much. Um, uh, least favorite moments? Might have been when Pete DeBoer was fired. That was kind of sad. Because I feel like it wasn't his fault. You yeah. Know? yeah. The players were just terrible. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I For me, that's not... I'm not super sad about that. I wasn't like emotionally attached to Pete DeBoer or anything, so it didn't that didn't bother me too much. I understood that. Let me put it that way. Right. I, I get it. You know, sometimes you just need to change. It's unfortunate for him, but yeah, uh, doing an outdoor show, outdoor might be a little hard actually, just because sound quality would be bad. Mm. Just I mean, you can hear cars driving by. So, um, but we do have a spot in downtown. We have a lead on a spot in downtown that wants to, us to host a show there. Um, so maybe we'll look into that maybe yeah. in the next couple of weeks. Although we don't want crowds around, so maybe it'll be a little bit longer from now. So not that we'd gather large crowds, but you know, <laughs> let's keep it safe for the next couple of weeks. Amen. It'll take a while to develop anyway. Uh, unless they say they want to keep the crowds to ten or less, I think we'll be okay. Right. Um, <laughs> I'd like to uh, maybe do some interviews. Yeah, it'd be great. Yeah, maybe we can get some people on here. So we've uh, got a uh, lead on a couple of folks actually yeah. for for interviews too. Yep. So we'll see uh, if there's someone we can do there. That'd be great. I'd, I'd love to be able to chat with some of those guys and um, make that a show for you guys essentially. Deuces wants to know when are we getting Fin Factor hazmat suits? <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Buy some stickers. There you go. <laughs> Any hazmat suit could be a Fin Factor hazmat suit. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right. Just go buy a hazmat suit and stick it. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. It's clever. He should have got one of those masks on <laughs> yeah. for the show. I uh, was going to say, if we were, did a uh, show record, because you know I do the, the goofy show opens, right? So you I was, do? Uh, yeah. So what I was going to do was the <laughs> uh, just show up with a, a pump bottle of soap and just from the beginning, just, <laughs> hey, everyone, Paul from the Fin Factor here, and just pump soap straight into my hand. Just let it ooze just un until we were done. <laughs> Totally wanted to do it. It's fantastic. Would have been good. All right. Show off the rails. I think it's time. Very good. Now, do you need to disappear to make this go away? Or Oh, you're right. I got to do it. Yeah, you got to. Yeah. Okay. Well, don't go. I mean, we can just say goodbye if you sure. need to, sir. Goodbye. Okay. Your transitions okay, are phenomenal. Good. Okay. So, uh, thank you guys for tuning in. <laughs> we do appreciate you uh, popping in and watch us uh, snort some inhalants. And, uh, boy, that came out wrong. And, um, you know, the uh, Super Chat money, we do appreciate that. If you happen to visit the store, of course, we appreciate that as well. And, uh, you know, you're welcome because you're going to look a whole lot better walking down the street with the Fin Factor gear on. So, um, if there's anything else you wanted to add before we go? Nope. Nope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so professional, by the way, just letting you guys know that. For Super Producer Aaron, I'm Paul. I'm Aaron. Uh, <laughs> we'll see you guys. Uh, we don't know when. Sometime. Soon? Bye. <laughs> <laughs>